The diplomatic institution of protecting powers dates back to an old practice, according to which state, which did not any, have any diplomatic relations with a foreign state, could ask a third state, called the protecting power, to safeguard their interests and those of their nationals in the foreign state. The appointment of that protecting power depended upon the approval of the three states concerned. The institution of protecting powers was applied in armed conflicts, and for the first time in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870-1871. In that case, the protecting power was neutral to the conflict. The institution was first recognized in the IHL Treaty in the 1929 Convention dealing with the protection of prisoners of war, and was devoted only to the protection of those persons. The function of the protecting powers was extended to cover the safeguarding of the interests of the requesting state in general by the four 1949 Geneva Conventions. According to those conventions, parties to an armed conflict must designate a protecting power at the outset of the conflict. If they fail to do so, they must accept the offer of the RCRC or any other impartial humanitarian organization to act as a substitute. Many IHL treaty provisions refer to the protecting powers. Generally speaking, the protecting powers may perform the three following functions. First, to establish the dialogue between the belligerent parties. Second, to safeguard the well-being of the victims and their protection. And third, to verify that the Geneva Conventions and Additional Protocol 1 are correctly applied, in particular with respect to the treatment of wounded, sick, shipwrecked, as well as prisoners of war and civilians. However, since its general recognition in the four Geneva Conventions, that institution has been rarely used. The main problems were disagreements regarding the choice of the protecting power or the unwillingness of chosen states to act as a protecting power. In fact, most of the tasks devoted to the protecting powers have been and still are performed by the RCRC. Another mechanism provided by IHL with respect to the implementation and enforcement of IHL is the bilateral inquiry procedure. According to the 1949 Geneva Conventions, in case of any alleged violation of the Conventions, a party to the conflict may require the institution of an inquiry. If the violation is established, the relevant states must put the violation to an end. It is interesting to see that the inquiry may be requested unilaterally and the other belligerent must accept it. However, the Convention does not provide any details on the procedure to be followed. So both parties must agree on that procedure. It is a serious obstacle for instituting bilateral inquiries. In practice, it has never been invoked. Additional Protocol 1 therefore provides for a permanent institutional mechanism for inquiry. The International Humanitarian Fact-Finding Commission According to Article 91 of Additional Protocol 1, the Commission has two main functions. It may inquire into any facts alleged to be a serious violation of the four Geneva Conventions and the Protocol, and it may facilitate, through its good offices, the restoration of an attitude of respect for the Conventions and the Protocol. It is competent only vis-à-vis -vis states which have declared that they recognized its competence at the time or after the ratification of the protocol 
or at the time of a specific armed conflict. The competence of the Commission is entirely based on the consent of the concerned states. In addition, although its formal primary function is to make conclusions on facts and not on the law and state responsibility, such responsibility may be easily established once the facts of a case are known. Finally, the expenses of the procedure are borne by the parties to the dispute. All these elements make states reluctant to refer incidents to the commissions. Indeed, it has never been used in practice. Moreover, as we will see, fact-finding missions are today performed by other bodies, especially NGOs and those established by the Human Rights Council. 